What's going on, everybody? RJ Ochoa here from SB Nation's bloggingtheboys.com. We hope all is well wherever you are. We hope you're happy, safe, healthy, and that you're excited because there was a lot that happened with the Dallas Cowboys on Tuesday. Today is, of course, August 9th, 2022. This is BTB Daily, BTB Live. You can call it whatever you want. We go live every single weekday afternoon to talk about the latest and greatest in the world of America's team. So if you haven't yet, please do subscribe here to the Blogging the Boys YouTube channel. We're going to have a good time as the season continues to unfold. We had uh, what was basically our 12th training camp practice uh, of camp so far on Tuesday, but we also had a few different things happen with the Dallas Cowboys, including some roster news. The team dropped their first unofficial depth chart of the season, so we have that to get to. So let's go ahead and start. Uh, Huzzah, I think is is maybe how this is pronounced um, phonetically. Uh, Money may her season upon us. That's right. We have no point in wasting it. I know we have training camp things to get to and, and stuff. Kind of a chill practice, obviously, as the Cowboys get ready to head to Denver for uh, their practice with the Denver Broncos and then of course their preseason game against them on Saturday night that is at 8 p.m. Central Time we will have a live show afterwards recapping everything that happened here on the channel we will podcast that for you as well on the blog and the boys podcast network but the Dallas Cowboys did in fact bring back Brett Maher maybe Maher money Maher big time big shot long ball Maher um, and they waived released uh, rookie undrafted free agent Jonathan Garibay out of Texas Tech University who did not even make it to the preseason obviously with the team there's a lot of tentacles to this there's a lot um, to kind of figure out but Brett Maher now back with the team obviously spent 2018 and part of 2019 with Dallas Uh, Maher kind of is the face Um, this is not the most flattering photo of him Um, doesn't don't look bad I mean it's not you know I'm not here to judge Brett Maher, but uh, but um, but Brett Maher is kind of the face, I think, of the dysfunction that the Cowboys have had at the kicking position for the last few years, just because it was um, it was it was Brett Maher that the team moved on from Dan Bailey in favor of, and we've said this before, and I think that this bears repeating because a lot of people think that we just and I just tend to come here and criticize the Cowboys. A lot of people have said in the last 24 hours because Brett Maher was obviously among the four kickers who worked out for the Cowboys. The other three uh, were J.J. Molson was, was the last addition, Cole Murphy out of the USFL, and Matt Amendola. Um, but but the Cowboys were proven to be correct in, in moving on from Dan Bailey. I don't think that they get enough credit for that. They were right, and in all due respect to Dan Bailey, it was very clear and obvious that. He was well past his ability to contribute to the team. We saw that during the tail end of the 2017 season, and they identified that properly uh, in the lead up to 2018, cutting him and moved on with Brett Maher. He has a proclivity, obviously, for for hitting uh, big time field goals as far as distances are concerned, uh, but he is not necessarily the most accurate kicker in the NFL. Samuel Rowe says, watch the Canadian billionaire kicker by the Cowboys. We'll see. Uh, Moda says he's the second money around these parts. Um, but um, but you know th- this is it's if you follow me on Twitter I have had some thoughts about this I've had some thoughts about how we've gotten here that's really what I'm upset by as a Cowboys fan because look I understand the cries of a lot of people hey what do you RJ what do you expect what are they going to do there's nobody out there what do you want you know Michael Badgley you, you know, want, want them to sign the money badger I mean what, what who do you expect who, give me your list of guys RJ my problem is with how we got here this is not a a great situation to be in for the Dallas Cowboys it's the kicker position right I know a lot of people don't think that's important and for all we know Lareem Hyrule who winds up being the kicker um for this team I don't know if they'll let him keep number nine I know Jalen had to pay for it but um it's it's the math of it all I tweeted this out Cowboys moved on from Greg Zerline this offseason. They reportedly wanted to bring him back. Okay, why did you want to do that? That doesn't make any sense. They didn't really do anything in free agency. They didn't bring in anybody notable. They didn't do anything during the NFL draft. It wasn't until after the draft was over when they signed Jonathan Garibay. They were banking on hitting the lottery. That didn't work out. After that, on July 1st, so barely over a month ago, they brought back Lareem. He has proven to be the more stable option in the competition. Then, you know, they get to camp and it's not working out. And they throw up their hands. They say, guys, can you believe that this loose plan we did didn't work out we're not in a stable position here what a surprise and um and so now you know you want to bring Brett Maher back and to act like the optics of the situation are not a real thing I don't think it's fair Brett Maher you know it was last Saturday that Jerry Jones after Jonathan Garibay and Lareem Hyrule who struggled again Jerry Jones said it's the wind blah 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 um and he said that what he cared about was how extra points when he cared about those 32 yard extra points which they're not even 32 yards but um Brett Maher is not a a great extra point kicker I tweeted this out too in the 29 games that Brett Maher played for the Dallas Cowboys all right 
He missed a kick, whether it was an extra point or a field goal, in 16 of them. 16 out of 29 games that Brett Maher played, that he Brett Maher kicked for the Dallas Cowboys, saw a miss of some kind. A miss of some kind is literally points that you are missing out on, points that he is costing your team. That is over half of the time. Now, we are three years removed from that 2019 season. It's certainly possible that Brett Maher improved, obviously. A lot of people point to how he he had success last year in the limited time that he played for the New Orleans Saints. But I tell you what, back to Jerry Jones' words, how he wants consistent extra point kickers. Greg Zerline was a more reliable extra point kicker than Brett Maher last year. That's not me advocating for Greg Zerline. That's not saying that Greg Zerline is awesome. That's saying if you don't think that Greg Zerline is enough, and nobody should from an objective standpoint, then Brett Maher cannot be enough. And I understand there are not a lot of options available here, but th- this is this is this is your own doing cowboys you made this bed and now we have to we have to sit in it we have to deal with it um it's um it's tough kevin uh with it with a common joke a lot of people have said um but um says so we if we just take a bunch of penalties and kick the extra points from 60 yards plus problem solved a lot of people have made this joke again sorry kevin not to call you out but uh because brett maher is kind of specialized in in long ball big time long shot field goals whatever i'll have you know brett maher attempted one field goal from downtown last year and i define downtown from beyond the 50 yard line obviously he missed it and so i mean like the <laughs> the one thing he's supposed to be money at the one thing he's supposed to be reliable at um it was um it did not go well for him in 2000 and uh in 20 to say 2020 2021 to say the least so uh before we get to camp one last thing that i wanted to talk about could tristan hill be traded this tweet popped up on tuesday from the fort worth star telegrams clarence hill jr uh on twitter clarence hill jr the tweet reads don't be surprised that the cowboys use tristan hill as trade bait for the start of the season he is having a a good camp excuse me cowboys kind of deep um along the interior of that defensive line um obviously you've got neville gallimore osa diggy Zua, Quentin Bohana, Carlos Watkins. Um, I've got John Ridgway, who we'll talk about in just a moment for a little bit of a different reason. Uh, but so Tristan Hill is, is kind of the odd man out. And it's obvious. I mean, if you do the math here, Tristan Hill wasn't uh, what wasn't drafted by this coaching staff, you know, so so he predates his coaching staff. Tristan Hill has had bad moments. There was the, you know, his rookie year when he fell asleep and all this stuff in the team meeting and blah, blah, blah. Um, so it makes sense. And this has been a very popular rumor all offseason long, really, even way before camp started so i mean the math makes sense to trade tristan hill i don't know what you can get for him um he's he's a player with some upside um and he's, he's in the final year of his rookie contracts. So I don't know that anybody's willing to move on, you know, from, from that or move on for that. Uh, I don't know that any team is like dying to have Tristan Hill. As Kevin knows, I don't know that he would have any trade value. That's the thing. I mean, it's, um, you know, just it, it, it would be nice, but I don't see how it happens uh, to a serious degree. But uh, let's move on. On the subject of John Ridgway, uh, you know, a lot of things happened on Tuesday for the Dallas Cowboys. We had the Brett Maher move, and we're certainly rooting for Jonathan Garibay wherever he winds up. We hope uh, nothing but success for him. But so Maher in, Garibay out. That's part of the news. The Cowboys released their first unofficial depth chart of the season. We'll get to that in just a little bit. But they also practiced. Like, of all the things that happened, the Cowboys also held a practice and and the Dallas Cowboys had a fight. Fight! The Cowboys had a fight, a skirmish, a bit of a tussle. They got into it uh, out on the fields in Oxnard, California. You know, I know the weather is better, but it still gets hot. Uh, here is the clip uh, of the Cowboys fight. I'm using that word uh, a little bit lightly. Joe Trahan of WFAA caught it. You can see John Ridgway and Connor McGovern getting in the mix. And, uh, well, you know, let's just play it for you. Just a preview. Just a sound. Yeah, not much of a fight, right? Like, you know, the, the New York Giants had a fight on um, on Monday that their assistant coach got into. Uh, the, by the way, the Washington Commanders, Ron Rivera, fired a coach on Tuesday. So I know it feels like stuff sucks right now, like some things for the Cowboys, but we're doing all right. It, it could be a lot worse. The, the division is um, is not necessarily doing great. But um, not, not a huge fight, not anything worth, like, really freaking out about, not a lot of punches or anything thrown, but I think it's very clear and obvious. Like I said, this is effectively the, the 12th practice um, of camp for the Cowboys. They're a little bit sick of, of, of you know, going up against one another. Definitely going to be a good thing uh, to get a new team, new bodies, another jersey, another, you know, uniform scheme, however you want to look at it. Um, 
on the opposite sidelines. So the Cowboys will have their joint practice with the Denver Broncos later this week, as well as their preseason game, as mentioned, on Saturday night. Um, so not. Uh, I wish it was more dramatic. I wish we had something to kind of sit here and kind of pick apart and look at whoa, whoa, whoa who do who started it blah, blah blah but that did not happen so um but john ridgeway i mean uh, i saw uh tom downey of chat sports go subscribe to their youtube channel they do such a great job he had a great tweet about this john ridgeway was like the overwhelming favorite to be the person who started uh the fight and he of course was involved but you know what i mean that a lot of us said a lot of people talked about how john ridgeway was uh, among other people but john ridgeway drafted um to kind of up the nasty you know get, get a glass eater involved the cowboys were too soft last year got run over over by the 49ers so kind of living up to that um that mantra john ridgeway is but so let's move on uh let's see by the way um moda says uh, look like a couple of kids on the playground lots of pushing but no one wants to throw a punch yeah one of those like come on man what's up come on what come on you're gonna talk what's up let's go like one of those um those deals you know always a hectic environment whenever you're in those i was never in, involved in that that kind of stuff you know me um super chill but anyway uh next uh only, I, like i said it was a bit of a chill day overall as far as camp was concerned uh the fight in question again using that word very loosely uh involved john ridgeway and connor mcgovern now uh connor mcgovern spoiler alert is listed as the starting left guard in the unofficial depth chart that the cowboys released on tuesday but he was not playing left guard in this moment no 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 no. this was the big jumbo package this is connor mcgovern getting work at fullback <laughs> Good to see that this is alive and well. Um, hey, I don't have a problem with this. I mean, it's not like you know, the Cowboys have one fullback on their roster and Ryan Nall. I don't, you know, I'm not worried about you know this or whatever. And, and if you can find a way to use Connor McGovern, do it. He's in the final year of his rookie contract too, so get as much out of that as you possibly can. Um, last highlight before we kind of move on just a little bit. Micah Parsons, I, I think you know. Thursday, Thursday, Tuesday really belonged to a few players. We've seen Noah Brown and Simi Fajoko start to pop. Trayvon Diggs didn't practice, so Kelvin Joseph did get a little bit of a run with the ones. Uh, but Micah Parsons kind of had a day. Hello, duh, Micah Parsons is amazing. What a big shock. Uh, but Micah Parsons uh, apparently not willing to stop and uh, and just going for the whole thing up against Dak Prescott. <laughs> All right, Micah, you know, hey, maybe don't touch the quarterback. That would be cool. Just, you know, we would appreciate it if you kind of chilled out just a little bit there. But um, so, all right, that's fine. So we've covered so far uh, the big time roster news. Cowboys uh, changing kickers, you know, and I know that Brent Maher is getting a lot of headlines. And you know, obviously we've got a lot ourselves at Blog of the Boys, but I don't know that Brent Maher is like really in competition here. This kind of does feel like Lareem Hyrule, whose job to lose. But Brent Maher has a big leg. And the Cowboys are going to Denver this weekend, so maybe he shows it off there. Who knows? Uh, so we've covered that. We've covered the subject of Tristan Hill maybe being traded, although that does feel a little bit unlikely. The big-time, super dramatic training camp fight. Uh, Connor McGovern at fullback. And, of course, um, Micah Parsons continuing to be amazing. But the Dallas Cowboys did release their first unofficial depth chart of the season on Tuesday. I want to say, before I put it on the screen, and I did a TikTok and Instagram reel about this as well, this is an unofficial depth chart. This is the unofficial depth chart before the first preseason game. It is not something that you can take seriously really at all. Uh, it is notable and it's important, you know, and it's, you know, fun and it's exciting because it means that real football is getting closer and closer and closer. But to put in perspective how hollow and meaningless this ultimately is, Jonathan Garibay was on it and then like an hour later got cut by the Cowboys. So it's not necessarily the biggest deal to read into. Uh, but that being said, let's get it up on the screen for you. Um, I've left the returners or the special teamers off of the screen because, again, Jonathan Garibay was on it. But, you know, the kickers for the Cowboys, you know, right now is listed. It's Lareem Hyrule who is the starter, which means uh, that uh, you know now Brett Maher is kind of second string in that capacity. For what it's worth, this did list Tony Pollard as the primary returner for the Cowboys on both kickoffs and punts. Um, I think we all know that those responsibilities will belong to Kevontae Turpin. So nothing really to read into from a special teams perspective. Um, I know that it is a little bit tiny on your screen, depending on what device you are watching on. But if you want to take a screenshot, we did also write about this at blogontheboys.com. So you can go see it there if you, you know, kind of want to look at it on a bigger thing zoom in whatever blah 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 uh that's up to you but uh we'll just kind of go top to bottom you know we'll do offensive defense let's just do it that way. let's just do it simply um offensively starting offensive line for the cowboys not a shock tyron smith i mentioned Connor mcgovern tyler biotish zach martin terrence steel um tyler smith not listed as a starter uh for what it's worth um that's i, I mean we all expect that to change i mean 
there is a bit of like footballness uh, with you know the ceremonial part of establishing somebody as the starter. I don't read anything into this at all. Tyler Smith is going to be the starting left guard for the Dallas Cowboys. I do think it's just a little bit interesting um, to to like prove that Josh Ball is the swing tackle. And again, not that that's like whenever you say interesting about this, it is like the the most bare minimum you know sort of quality or quantity of that definition because you can't really draw anything from this. But uh, Matt Waletsko is listed there as Tyron Smith's backup at left tackle on the left side. But so that means Josh Ball is like the only swing tackle that they have. So this is going to be an important game for Josh Ball certainly on, on Saturday night against the Broncos. You're starting wide receivers for the Cowboys and 11 personnel obviously. Sealand, Michael Gallup, Jalen Tolbert there is Dennis Houston, James Washington, and Noah Brown listed as the twos. Um, so no real, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah um, about this. By the way, Alex Storm says, uh, how many drinks are you on regarding re-signing Maher, RJ? Not at all. I tell you what, though, I do have a caramel macchiato here. Not a, not an ad, but um, my wife ordered it, and so I'm drinking it. Uh, but uh, Moda says, the center to the left side of the line still sounds like a mess. I don't think so. I mean, I'm willing to trust Tyler Biotish, honestly. You know, let's see what he's got going on here in year three. Um, Tyler Smith has kind of passed every test so far. The preseason will be very interesting. And we know we, we trust healthy Tyron. It's just a matter of, like, is he going to be healthy or not? Obviously, that's kind of the question. But uh, not a shock that Dak Prescott's starting quarterback. See, Gelly, and I mentioned there's only one fullback on the roster in Ryan Null. Um, Rico Dowdle's the third running back. I don't, you know, no real confusion there uh defensively you know you're starting dallas cowboys defensive line uh from left to right demarcus lawrence neville gallimore osa odigizua and dorrance armstrong again i don't think any of that is is breaking news to people and i don't think any of that is shocking um you know you're, you're starting linebackers micah parsons and leighton vanderish you've got anthony barr and jabril cox right there um so so nothing you know to write home about you're starting secondary anthony brown we we know of course is the starter opposite of trayvon diggs jordan lewis there in the slot um and yeah i think we've actually cut off the third safety option here but uh cowboys going with three safety so you know hey that, that's how they're listing this but i mean that's not really anything again to read into this is all just kind of chalk this is all what we expected uh from the initial starting secondary starting team overall for the cowboys the name we've cut off uh, if it isn't obvious by the way is malik hooker uh whose name is underneath donovan wilson but the slide uh the slide decided to be mean and cut off malik hooker so um Again, I would not read into this. There were a lot of people who saw this on Twitter, said, how is Tyler Smith not starting, blah, blah, blah. No, this is just, this is, they, they've, they've got to put it out. That's what all this is. The Cowboys have to list a starting lineup on both sides of the ball, obviously special teams as well. And so this is what they came up with. They also don't want to tip their hand. Um, you know, NFL coaches can be very weird about that. Um, you know, Trey says the wide receivers look horrible without Gallup. That's honestly part of what upsets me about Brett Maher is, the, the kid this kicking problem was so obvious i mean it was so obvious from the jump so we're, we're in this now we're stuck it's august 9th and this was predictable but we're stuck we can't do anything to get out of it and to your point trey i'll put your comment back on the screen wide receiver looks horrible without gallup yeah it does and you know gallup's hurt james washington's hurt i mean so i <laughs> i don't i don't you know feel like th this is predictably going to not go well if they don't get somebody in there but of course they do still have time obviously as we all well know swing tackles the same thing what's going to happen if and when tyron smith gets hurt there isn't going to be anybody to help them out uh huzzah says didn't luke gifford have a phenomenal preseason last season but got injured if so potential second string luke gifford has shined in the preseason before um he's kind of a special teams contributor so i don't know that there's much to kind of you know i don't know there's a lot of stock to kind of buy when it comes to luke gifford so we'll ultimately see how it all shakes out moda says everyone hold a good thought for rj after the release of garibay hey i look i'm i want every player on the cowboys to succeed that included jonathan garibay so i am bummed for him i i feel for him i do think that it was a very difficult situation i think that the cowboys obviously signed him after the draft and but they put a lot of pressure on him that they really did that he was expected to come in and be amazing i don't know if that got to him or not i know a lot of people try, you know tend to kind of speculate and pontificate on things like this i have no idea why Jonathan Garibay wasn't performing well throughout training camp, but the Cowboys set him up to be the fall guy for all of this. And so now there's a lot of fans kind of taking victory laps around his release. This, you know, this is a tough moment for Jonathan Garibay. He's been in the NFL for like two, three months. I mean, so it's um it's a tough situation to um to just put him in. And so, like I said, I hope he I hope the best for him wherever he winds up. But 
I would not put any stock uh, into this at all. I would not take anything away from the unofficial depth chart. Um, we're getting to the place where we've kind of learned everything we can from camp. We've learned everything we can about the offense, about the defense, certainly about the special teams. And now it's just a matter of live in-game action. That's not to say that practices um, aren't worthwhile or don't have merit of their own, but we're at this place where we need to learn something from opposing competition as my dog uh, tries to bark in the background. My dog's, you know, his name is Bear. So I know there's a lot of new viewers around here. He, um, Neither of his teams are good. I mean, obviously, you know, he's got the Cowboys going on. He's frustrated by it. The Bears are bad in a whole different way. Now he's dealing with the Roquan Smith rumors. I mean, it's just tough, tough time for Little Bear. But, um, but yeah, uh, Alex Storm, by the way, says, watch Garibay get signed by New England or Cincinnati. Cincinnati's got Evan McPherson. They're not. And go 25 for 25 on the season. That would be the boys' luck. Yeah, we will see uh, what ultimately happens with Jonathan Garibay. My dog is barking, which clearly means it's time to go. Uh, but a few things uh, before we leave. Number one, love you. Number two, this is our first of two live shows here on the blog and the boys youtube channel for tuesday august 9th later tonight 7 p.m central time if you're with us live obviously if you're watching after the fact you can go watch that later uh but 7 p.m central time we'll have a live show uh live blog and the boys roundtable myself and several other blog and the boys staffers we'll talk about the maher thing garibay we're going to do our training camp mvps and lvp so far so if you want to be a part of that that would be awesome we will also podcast that conversation for you if you would rather listen on the go or in the gym in the treadmill in the garden whatever it is uh so that's first thing second thing um i love you again or that was the first thing so third thing i love you again and uh fourth thing uh make sure to check out blog the we have stuff coming out all the time my name is rj ochoa by the way you can follow me on twitter or instagram at rj ochoa on tiktok at rj dot ochoa we've got videos i've got videos that come out every you know several videos a day on tiktok and his instagram reels uh if you want to email me you can rj.ochoa at sbnation.com if you want to leave a comment down below we'll get to those also and uh yeah let's uh let's do this thing let's have a good tuesday hopefully we see you later tonight for the round table and uh hopefully um hopefully whatever you have for dinner is good or breakfast or lunch i hope whatever next meal you eat is amazing but uh thanks for hanging out everybody we'll see you next time